Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N. Y, and the second word is and, spelled A-N-D, and the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first coincidence miracle today has to do with evidence. I, I received evidence from God that I was in the right place at the right time. Let me explain. Uh, as you know, I hand out cards, little business cards that talk about my book and our website and um, our radio show, etc. Uh, just to let people know that you know the book is available and the website is available. And I often run into people who have serious questions or concerns or, or some re some problem with their religion because they were never told certain things. So I wound up meeting with two women uh, as I was passing out the cards. And uh, both of them were unhappy, uh, didn't want to talk about God. Uh, I asked why, and then they told me that uh, both of them are close friends, but over the last eight months, they had had five deaths in their families uh, together, a total of five, I think, you know, two in one family, three in another family. So they're, they're very preoccupied with, like, you know, a funeral every month. Uh, preoccupied with the fact that people are dying and they they weren't pleasant deaths. The people were suffering in many cases. So they developed an attitude, and I guess talking to each other about it, their attitude became one of, you know, why why does God do this? Why, why is God being so mean? Um, why do people have to die? Why do they have to suffer? And, you know, this was an opportunity for me to say something. I have taught Sunday school now for 45 years. Um, I've read the Bible several times. So um, I'm not boasting, but, I mean, I have the exposure and the experience of answering questions like this over the last uh, 50 years. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's my call to duty. It's my call to say to people like this who have never been told some basic fundamental things, and I'm not faulting them. They just were never there. Uh, they may not have a religion. They may never be reading the Bible. Uh, maybe they don't have any friends who know the answer. So I simply explained to them how when God created everything, uh, the story of Adam and Eve, God made everything perfect, and there there was no death. There was no need for anybody to die. But because of Adam and Eve's sin, God explained in the very beginning, because of their sin, they caused... Uh, 
the things that he had made perfectly, he, he they caused them to be blemished. In other words, you know, creation was perfect, but because Adam and Eve sinned, they made it imperfect now. It's like looking at a, a beautiful painting by a famous artist, a very, very, very famous artist, and somebody comes by and they mark it with a, uh, a marker, and they mark uh, X's all over the painting, and, you know, the painting was wonderful and beautiful, but now it's a mess. And uh, so what God told everybody way back then when Adam and Eve sinned, as he, he told, and it's written in the Bible, that they brought death into the world. And so the only way we get back to the, the condition that God wanted, the perfect world, the perfect condition, the happiness where people do not die, is we have to go through this life on earth, and and then we have to die to get into the new life, the brand new life that will be what was originally intended and the bible explains this that god is is going to be restoring everything and that's why jesus or the messiah comes into the world because the messiah's job his mission is to come in and to restore and rejuvenate and repair things first by repairing the souls of people and getting people to behave correctly and properly and to be good people. So if we all become good people and then we die, we go to heaven. So dying is not a bad thing. It's it's like getting on a train or a subway. That's what death is. You get on a, a train or a subway, the doors close, and when the doors open, you get off and hopefully you wind up in heaven because you lived a good life. And so I told these people this, and they never knew that, that that's why people have to die. So at least now they know their loved ones have taken the train or the subway, that's all. And that's what death is. And they're going to be getting off at the end, which hopefully will be heaven if they were good people. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone whose spouse had passed away at 5.55 in the morning, five minutes before 6 in the morning at 555 and that's a whole holy number 555 means grace or the presence of God and they relate to us that uh, they wake up uh, once or twice a week at 555 uh, automatically and they take it as a sign from heaven that their spouse is in heaven and it, it pleases them when that happens and this is happening to them for a while and they're reluctant to tell their three children about it because they don't want their three children to feel bad if it doesn't happen to them. But one day they were inspired by God to let the three children know they're all adults, married, they have their own families, uh, but to let the three children know that this happened to them. And they got a text message back from one of the three saying, golly, the same thing happened to me that exact same morning. So that's a beautiful coincidence, miracle. And if they didn't follow God's message to send it out, they would have never known that their child also had the same thing happen to them as well on the same day. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who decided in the middle of the day they were going to drive over to a church and make a visit at the church, spend some time in prayer. And while they were doing that, driving over, apparently they do this often during the week. They have certain days where they are inspired to do it and they follow the inspiration and on the way over they had a, a inspiration or an idea or let's call it a premonition because all those things come from God premonitions ideas inspirations are things that come from God they pop into our mind and so they had this let's say premonition that they were going to see a certain priest they had not seen in a long time but they would see this priest at the church and certainly as they drove into the, the driveway who was right at the main entrance standing there was this exact priest that they had the premonition about who was there and they had not seen in a very long time. So that's a beautiful coincidence miracle because it proves that premonitions and ideals do come from God. Our next coincidence miracle is also another premonition idea. And sometimes when I get letters from people that are similar, I, I and I don't get to record them or use them, I'm able to put them on the same week, and that's what's happening now, because we've got another person who wrote in about a premonition, or let's call it an idea from God, or inspiration from God, or premonition, or an intuition. All those words, those four words, are clues that God is speaking to us, and we can talk back to God and say, is that really you, etc., and ask him for clarity. But this person was wrapping several gifts for a birthday party they were going to, and uh, 
they when they opened up everything and started to wrap the gifts, they were concerned because it looked like they were probably not going to have enough wrapping paper and ribbons, et cetera. But they got inspired at the start of the wrapping not to worry that they would have exactly enough. And certainly that would be a miracle, they related to us. And that's exactly what happened. They had exactly enough paper, precisely. Nothing was wasted. Nothing was thrown away. And so they felt that God was inspiring them and, and giving them this inspiration or idea, intuition. And so now we've had two of those today of people who do talk to God, who do ask God what to do, and they get familiar with these voices of God that they are hearing. You know, if you talk to God every day for seven days, when you get into the second week, you're going to be pretty familiar with how God operates and how it feels when he's talking to you. Our next coincidence miracle is from a person who was uh, having a bad week. Um, and again, we all get bad weeks. I think every week I'm telling you a story about somebody who's having a bad week. But they weren't feeling very successful about their life. Uh, they were stressed out about problems they were facing at the moment. They didn't, they didn't tell us what the stresses were, but, you know, it could be car problems or plumbing problems or electrical problems, et cetera, et cetera, or job problems whatever they are, we all get problems. And then the devil makes it worse because the devil nags us and moans about it. Uh, the devil will drive you nuts. So that's why we have to keep talking to God. If every time the devil bothers you, you talk to God, the devil's going to go away and find somebody else because he sees that all he's doing is getting you to talk to God. So that's why we always talk to God about everything, and that makes the devil want to go away. Um, and so what happened to this person was they were inspired to go put the radio on, and they relate that they don't often do that, but they were inspired, to, and they prayed and asked, do you, God, do you really want me to do that? And they felt God say, yes, turn the radio on. And an amazing thing happened, they say, because they put the radio on, and three songs were played, right, one right after the other, as soon as they put the and no commercial between them. And the first one was Lean On Me, uh, which was, is by Bill Withers. Uh, the next one was I Write the Songs That Make the Whole World Sing by Mary Man uh, Barry Manilob. Uh, the third one was You've Got a Friend uh, by James Taylor. And those of you who know these songs, each one of these songs you could imagine, and it's good to imagine that God is singing those songs to you. So as Bill Withers is singing Lean On Me, you're hearing God say Lean On Me. Uh, when you're hearing Barry Manilow sing, I write the songs that make the whole world sing, uh, and, he, and the words even say that I'm I'm within you, I'm even in you, uh, that makes you think of God singing to you. And certainly James Taylor uh, saying, you've got a friend. And in my book, I wrote about a miracle that I had where I turned on the radio once like 40 years ago, and James Taylor was singing that song and brought tears of joy to my eyes because I was having a difficult period, and I turned the radio on and heard James Taylor singing to me as if it was God saying, you've got a friend. So I think we've had a pretty good day today uh, sharing stories like the two women who had many deaths in their family, and they were complaining about why does God make people die? And we talked about how, well, they had no, no training and didn't know about uh, that because of Adam and Eve's sin. That's why people have to die. And now when we die, it's like taking a train ride or a subway ride to heaven if we've been good people. If we're not good people, well, we don't take the ride to heaven. Uh, the next one was about um, a, a person who awoke at 5.55 in the morning often. Uh, the next one was about... Um, uh, someone who had an idea that they were going to find someone, a premonition, when they went to visit at the church, and they did find that person. Uh, and the next one was uh, another person wrapping gifts and had a premonition they would have enough paper. And now the last one, turn the radio on and have three songs sung to you about God singing to you. So we have all really been blessed today by getting all these different kinds of coincidence miracles to confirm for us, each one of us, including me, that God is talking to us. He's inspiring us. He's giving us premonitions. He's giving us intuitions. That's his voice talking to us. And we need to talk back when he inspires us. Talk back and we'll have conversations with God. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.